Good morning from a chilly campsite here in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, today I'm back with another video and I'm going to be telling our story of our second year on the road. And I really had to think hard about how I was going to tell this story because so much had happened in that second year that I decided that I would break it up into three major incidences that had happened from January to September of 2020. And I will say that by the third incident that Barbara and I were broken, that we had decided to get off the road, that we just couldn't handle it anymore because of the circumstances, which once you hear, I think that you'll understand why. If you missed our first video, I'll link it somewhere here, but I went over um, how we got on the road, our experiences of traveling throughout the East Coast, and just our general time uh, adjusting to full-time RV life. With that said, I couldn't be prouder of how Barbara and I worked together as a team to, to overcome each one of these situations. You know, when we first started the trip, I was thinking, man, if we could survive living together in such a teeny tiny space with no personal space 24 seven for over a year, then we can overcome anything. And now after going through these experiences, I know for a fact that we can overcome anything. And it's such an incredible feeling to realize that, that your partner, you can go through the worst of things and you know that they have your back, you have theirs, and you just can support each other. If this is your first time here, my name is Dan, my wife's name is Barbara, and we are wandering while we can. We have been full-time RVers for the last two and a half years, and we just share our experiences of living a nomadic lifestyle. So if that is something that you're interested in, please click the subscribe button. And if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button and sharing with any friends and family, I would really appreciate it. Okay, with that said, let's get inside, warmed up, and I'll tell you all about it. Let's get into it. There, much better. <laughs> nice and warm in here. Okay, so we had just gotten back from Pittsburgh and we had a couple days left in Austin before we hit the road. Our plan was to drive to Big Bend National Park, which was about an eight or nine hour trip considering we were towing, stopping for gas, lunch, etc. Now, up to this point, Barbara had not driven at all. So I had been through Texas before, and I was anticipating a very long and boring drive. And I thought that this could be a good opportunity for Barbara to get some practice towing. And on top of that, I had some work that I needed to do, so I kind of was thinking we could kill two birds with one stone with her driving and then with me doing a bit of work. So we decided that I would drive us out of Austin, get us away from traffic, a lot of turns, etc., into a spot where it'd be easier for Barbara to take over, a little bit more comfortable for her. So we got on the road, and about two hours later, we were out in the country, and we found a, a little spot off the side of the road that we could just pull off and, and switch. So I had hopped out, Barbara jumped into the driver's seat, and before we knew it, we were back on the road. So Barbara pulled off, and we got back on the highway. I began unpacking my laptop so that I could start some work. And about five minutes later, Barbara asked me, hey, should I feel vibration in the steering wheel? I'm like, no, no, you shouldn't. Uh, I'm like, you know, slow down and see if the vibration goes away. And so she did, and it, the vibration stopped. And she said, okay. And so probably another five or 10 minutes goes by, and she's feeling a little bit more comfortable. So she starts increasing the speed again to get us around 60 miles an hour, maybe 65 miles an hour. And again, she starts saying, I feel vibration in the steering wheel. And I said, huh. And before we knew it, all of a sudden the trailer just started swaying in the back. And I didn't even realize it immediately, but Barbara yelled out because she saw it in the rearview mirror. So I look back and I can see that the trailer is swaying. And it went from slow to fast very, very quickly. So I yelled out, slow down, slow down. And she did, we began slowing down, but that actually seemed to make it worse. The trailer was just going all over the road and there was nothing I could do. I was completely frozen in fear. And I look over at Barbara and I can't even imagine what was going on in her head. Because the worst part was, was when I turned my glance onto the oncoming traffic, I could see a row of cars coming at us and the trailer 
was pushing us into the oncoming lane. And so Barbara did the smartest thing, and she decided to put us into the shoulder, to start moving the truck and the trailer over to the shoulder to try to get us into the dirt. Now that shoulder had a dirt incline, but it wasn't like a steep incline. It, was, it appeared to be somewhat gradual. So I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna be okay. And I think at this time, we're probably going around 30 miles per hour, so I'm hoping the best. And so we start moving over, and the trailer's still going crazy in the back, and we start, we hit the dirt. And all of a sudden, we just get, the truck gets pulled back, everything just, everything just blacks. Like, I can't even really remember of what happened in that moment. All I knew was that we slid to a stop at some point, and until we came to that final stop, I just, we were both hyperventilating. We had, it was eerily quiet inside the truck because we were both in disbelief. And for a very, very split second, I thought, everything's okay. The truck and the trailer, we're okay. Everything's in one piece. I think maybe things are just shooken around inside the trailer, but I think that everything is, is, is okay. And then the reality of the situation sank in as I looked back. What had happened was, was that when we hit that dirt shoulder, the trailer flipped. The trailer flipped on its side. And what happened was is it pulled us all, it pulled the truck backwards. And the momentum ended up sandwiching the truck and the trailer together in that the back of the truck went through the front of the trailer. So the truck was several feet off the ground because of how the hitch is connected to the truck and the back end of the truck was through the, the front of the trailer. One of the cars that we narrowly missed stopped and rushed over to see if we were okay. I really don't remember what they said, it's all a blur, but they got us out of the truck just in case there was a fire or some sort of explosion. At the time, I don't think I fully understood how close we were to seriously hurting ourselves or possibly even dying. The dogs were fine, they were incredibly excited and barking a lot, but perfectly fine. Barbara, on the other hand, was not. She was crying and obviously very much upset, and it took me a minute to compose myself. But when I did, I walked over and we just held each other. Because in that moment, that pain that we were feeling wasn't going to go away. We were in the middle of nowhere and our little home on wheels was destroyed. When I began to think back of all of the hours painting and renovating it and making, our, making it our little home, I just felt like I got punched in the stomach and I wanted to throw up. It was a brutal and helpless feeling. After sitting there for a bit, my mind just went into survivor mode. I was trying to weigh all the different options and think of the possible scenarios of things that we could do to fix this. Thankfully, the two gentlemen that had stopped to see if we were okay had already called the police, and the sheriff showed up not there long after, and just made sure that we were okay, asked us some questions, and then he called the tow truck. Now. I didn't have cell service, so I couldn't call our insurance company, so I had no clue what we needed to do, and I had to wait until we got back into some town or, or area that had service. But thankfully, the time waiting for the tow truck went by really quickly. I, I was amazed, I was so surprised, because I just figured that I would be sitting there ruminating, but thankfully, that was not the case. After the tow truck arrived, they gave us a very good demonstration of how to write a trailer and disconnect a truck from a twisted up hitch. Um, if it wasn't my truck and trailer, I probably would have found it incredibly interesting, but instead it was just horribly painful. Before they loaded the trailer up onto the tow truck, we were able to get inside and get a couple articles of clothing and a few personal items so that we could at least be prepared to stay in a hotel. The nearest town was Junction, Texas. And when I say a stereotypical Texas town, Junction is it. The very first thing that we saw upon coming into town was a Christmas tree made out of deer antlers next to the deer processing plant, of course. Now, 
it was a quaint little town. The main street seemed like it had seen better days with most of the shops being empty. But obviously at that point, all we wanted to do was just get to a spot where I could make a phone call and figure out where we're gonna stay for the night and, and our next steps. So the tow truck driver had recommended a motel in the downtown area of Junction. And so he had dropped us off there with our the little belongings that we had. And we went in, got a room, and went over to plug in our cell phones to start charging them and make the phone calls to the insurance company as well as to our families to let them know that we were okay. Dealing with the insurance was incredibly frustrating. It was three or four on a Friday and our provider, Progressive, they do not work on the weekends. So no one is answering phone calls on Saturday or Sunday. So I, I had called, I had put in a claim and I was waiting for someone to call me back. No one called me back until Monday. So we had no clue of what was happening, but after it was 5 p.m. on that Friday, I knew that we were at a minimum going to be staying in Junction until Monday. We didn't hear from the claims adjuster until Tuesday, and because of how busy they were, they couldn't come out to see the trailer until Friday, which meant we were in Junction for over a week, really without having any idea what was going to happen. Because of this, we had to work on an assumption. And that assumption was there were two options. The first option is that they consider it a total and we get our money back. Second option is, is that they're going to repair it and we're gonna be off the road for four to six months. Now, obviously what we went through was incredibly traumatic. And so Barbara and I, had to have a serious conversation about whether or not we wanted to continue. So after we let the emotions die down, the shock of it just passed by, we talked about it. Selfishly, I did not want to end the trip. And my reasoning was, was that first, I didn't want to end the trip on a bad note. I didn't want to end the trip like that. And also, we had an itinerary that was going to be incredible. We were going to Utah, we were going to the Grand Canyon, Arizona, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Washington. There was so many things to look forward to that I did not want to miss that and I wanted to continue. But if Barbara wasn't on board, it wouldn't have been fun. It wouldn't have been enjoyable. She probably would have been miserable. And so we played that scenario out. What if we quit? What if we went back? What would that look like? And what would we regret from choosing to go back? It would we regret anything? Is it been too much? And just kind of play out that scenario to see how we would feel. Thankfully, we both agreed that we didn't want to stop yet and we wanted to continue. <laughs> So Barbara and I talked about what kind of trailer we would want. Actually, it was kind of fun. And in hindsight, we had the benefit of living in our previous trailer for seven to eight months. So we knew the things that we liked and the things that we didn't like. And so we took that experience and put together a list of the things that we would want in our new trailer. The first was size. We knew that we wanted a bigger trailer, and now that we had a bigger truck, we weren't as limited like we were when we had our Toyota Highlander. So we had a higher towing capacity and we could get something bigger. And now I'm not gonna go into all the specifics of exactly why we chose our new trailer, but thankfully I had jumped onto RV Trader and narrowed down our options to a, a few trailers until we found one that we really liked, which was in Tucson, Arizona. So you're probably thinking, well, how were you planning on getting to Tucson? Your truck was totaled. Surprisingly enough, that was not correct. So the truck had been dropped off at a mechanic in Junction. So they had an opportunity to look at it, inspect it, and see what had happened. And it was fine. The axle was okay. The wheels were fine. The engine was fine. It was perfectly drivable. Now, yes, the back of the truck was completely banged up and it needed new tires because they popped in the uh, impact, but again, it was drivable. So that was a great piece of news and a relief on our end. So when we found out that we had a drivable truck and we had a potential trailer that we could buy, we had something we could work with and kind of develop a plan. The next step was to get over to the trailer and to collect all of our things and salvage whatever we could. I have a very vivid memory of seeing the trailer in the junkyard and just my heart dropping. I, I wanted to cry. I saw it there and it was just sad. 
and uh, it felt like the end of something. It felt like the end, like a defining moment. But despite that, we just had to get to work, clean everything out, and get ready for what the next phase was going to bring, whatever that may be. So we are uh, cleaning up the complete and utter disaster of our trailer flipping and uh, crashing yesterday. Uh, a little less emotional today, which is good because yesterday absolutely was uh, horrible. Um, but, you know, it's uh, one thing at a time. We're currently in a uh, junkyard, and so that pretty much tells you all you need to know. And um, so, anyways, I'll just kind of cut to it and get right to the main damage. So this is the... The front of the trailer which is where most of the, the damage happened um, essentially the trailer or the truck from here it turned this way and it and it went up into the into the window here so as you can see if I go in an angle it is completely pushed in it's completely crushed yeah and uh, down here the the metal bent back and the side is bent is also bent so it's this is i mean i i can open up the storage bay but it's probably going to be difficult obviously as you, you, I don't know if you can see it's it's really crushed in there here so um this this side of the trailer this fell over this fell over on this side. I mean, basically all the refrigerator and the food, uh, all my office stuff, like I had a printer here, all of it came through the window and just smashed. So when, when they uh, righted the, the trailer, all of the stuff was, was on the ground. And the propane tank went flying down, uh, I don't know, about 20 or 30 yards from, from the trailer. We had two gas tanks here that were dumped, that gas head was coming out. Here, this is just, you know, you can see in. This is the the bedroom. Uh, that's the, the one of the cabinets next to the bed. This side, there really, there isn't too much damage. I don't, I don't think. But, like I said, and thankfully back here, the, the generator and all this was intact it it works i tested it it's fine i'll show you the inside now so we've cleaned up a lot but essentially all of this is covered in clothes food eggs. glass eggs the refrigerator here when it flipped on this side this opened up, the freezer did not open up, but this opened up and everything inside of it. We just went to the grocery store, so we were completely full and everything f fell this way and just crashed, you know, just crashed here. There's still, you can see there's ketchup or whatever, I don't even know what that is, uh, some barbecue sauce. The wall here, it's just food. I think some sort of soy sauce or something got out and broke. Teriyaki, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I had. Our plants, uh, they had a couple plants, and so they, they just flew, obviously, and just smashed everywhere. There's cereal. Now, inside, with this, you can see, I mean, it's just, it's very, it's really messed up. Um, the bed is completely off its... Like, I mean, I don't know about the bed. We haven't brought it brought it down yet to see the damage, but obviously you can tell here that this poked right through that. So, um, and then down here by the bed, there, the, this is all broken. I think that's about it, really. I mean, this side of the trailer didn't seem to be too. I don't think that it's too damaged. It is open. Yeah. And my my because my clothes I don't know if that was here. Yeah. But my clothes flew out of here, and somehow this opened, mm, and stuff might be came cracked. out, and clothes come inside. It was weird. It was weird. Yeah. So, the bathroom wasn't bad. 
The bathroom seemed to be okay. It was just a massive Thankfully, bathroom. nothing came up. <laughs> but we had we had dumped all of our our sewage tanks and our gray tanks, so you know nothing, no fluids like that got into the trailer or anything. I mean, all of this stuff that we have in here now, we've just bagged up. Um, we're going to be taking this stuff out today. Yeah, so right now, we just have all of our stuff out. And we got boxes. We went to the, the local grocery store, and they had some boxes by the dumpsters that they weren't using, and they were clean boxes, so we just went and gr grabbed them. Uh, we still have a lot of cleaning to do, like this the, the chair here. There's ketchup and, and stuff all over it. <laughs> Our, the bike that was on the front, this bike had been asking to be killed a while ago, but it's uh, this is it finally ran out of the lives. Um, so we're just waiting for the insurance uh, adjuster to come and kind of figure things out. But uh, that's uh, that's the quick down dirty. The tow truck driver that had helped us pick up the truck and trailer on the day of the accident was so nice. He let us borrow his truck so that when we were packing up all of our things at the trailer, we didn't have to carry each box one at a time over to the motel. So we just got his truck, we loaded everything up, and we brought it over to the motel. The motel room was packed. We had all of our things stacked up along the walls. And so with two dogs, with both of us, everything, there was hardly any room inside of that motel room. Surprisingly, I look fondly back at our time in Junction. It was a quiet town. We felt safe there, people were friendly, and it felt like we were in a movie. I felt like we got stuck somewhere, that we had no other options, we were trying to figure something else out, and then you discover that it's this quaint, little, nice place that you would have never discovered otherwise. With that said, there was stress because we were hinging all of our future plans off of the judgment of our claims adjuster. So when he finally arrived on Friday, the moment had come and we just couldn't wait to hear what he had to say. And of course, it took him all day of going through, reviewing the trailer, the damage, adding everything up, quantifying everything, until I think it was around 5 p.m. when he finally called us over to go over the numbers. I remember that he did not immediately say it was a total. He kind of let us on for a bit until finally he said, okay, it's a total. We're like, oh, thank you, thank you. Because we had rented a, a, a towable U-Haul and we were planning on leaving the next day to drive to Tucson. So, after everything was done with the claims adjuster, we excitedly hurried over to the U-Haul to pick up our towable trailer, and then we brought it over to the motel and started packing everything up so that we could get on the road uh, the next day. After packing everything up, we went over to our favorite diner in Junction to have our last meal. Going out for dinner. <laughs> our favorite place. Our famous place in Junction, In Texas. Junction. Just right there, across the street. So you're gonna show them the pool. Oh, we have a pool. <laughs> and our hotel room is back there. Sun Valley Motel. Great. And then that night we got a good night's sleep and we woke up early and we got on the road. It felt so strange to be driving away from Junction because we didn't have our truck the entire time that we were in Junction. And now we were not only back on the road, but we were towing a small little trailer. And so I was very nervous. I was paying attention to every sound, every vibration, every movement, just because I did not want to get broken down or have another catastrophic event happen during our trip to Tucson. Our plan was we were going to stay at a hotel for a couple of nights until we found an Airbnb that we could stay at for a longer period of time. We were anticipating in staying in the Tucson area anywhere between two, maybe three weeks. And boy, were we wrong. <laughs> it ended up being five weeks. So we quickly discovered that we were in Tucson during their world famous gem show. So when we were looking for any long-term Airbnbs, the prices were like double or triple what they normally were. And so we were desperately looking around for a place that had a kitchen, that allowed dogs, and was at a reasonable price. And we were not having any luck. So Barbara finally found an option that it was its own house, it had a kitchen, it even had a yard, and it was within our price range. 
So the next question was, well, where is it located? We knew nothing about Tucson. And so we got on Google Maps, we got on the satellite view, and we're looking at the neighborhood. And it seems fine. There was nothing that we could really tell that made it seem like it was bad or dangerous. And we were trying to look at reviews and the reviews for the Airbnb were really good. And so we decided, you know what? There's no other options. Let's book it. So we moved over to this Airbnb and it ends up being in Southern Tucson which if any of you are familiar with Southern Tucson, you could have warned us. <laughs> it was a very, very bad neighborhood. We could see drug deals happening on the street. We were woken up to gunfire in the middle of the night. We had ordered dog food and that was stolen on the porch. So yeah, it wasn't great. But this Airbnb did have bars in the window. It did have a full security system and it even had a front gate in which we could park our car behind and lock at night. So really we did feel safe when we were inside the house. It was just outside that you did not want to spend any time walking around the neighborhood or even really driving around the neighborhood. Despite that, things were going in a good direction for us. We met with a couple that they were selling their trailer and we loved it. They were super nice and we were able to come to an agreement about buying it from them. We had found a mechanic that was going to work on the truck and they were going to fix it for us. I suppose that this would be the biggest downside to full-time RVing is that when something happens to your RV or your trailer, you are absolutely displaced from your home. That you have to live out of a suitcase, you have to find somewhere to go, and if it's in some strange city where you don't know anybody, you don't know anything about the location, it can be very stressful and really, really difficult. So I'm going to explain this story about us picking up our new trailer and I'm almost certain that most people will think that the people that we're buying the trailer from were shady. Now I do want to express that this, we did not feel like that. When we were buying it from them, we felt everything was on the up and up. It just were a couple incidences that kind of were curious. I didn't understand why they chose to do certain things and yet it happened. Because our truck was in the shop, we had no way of picking up our new trailer. So we had to go to Enterprise and rent a truck. So we were waiting for a text message from the couple to let us know when we could come over to get the trailer. So we do get a text message saying, hey, come on over, it's ready. So we head over and we arrive and they're not there. And there's a note saying, here is where you can find the key, etc. So we were able to get into the trailer and all this. I had texted the guy and I said, I thought you were going to be here. And he said, no, no, we left about a half hour ago. Uh, we didn't think it would be necessary to see you before, you know, to when you were picking it up, which I thought was really kind of strange. I ended up shrugging it off because after thinking about it, there really wasn't much for us to talk about. It just would have been nice for him to walk me through the different systems and give me any other information and just generally be there for us to receive the trailer from them. So I just thought, okay, well, we'll get in there and if we have any questions for him, we'll call him and, and let him know. Over the next hour or two, Barbara was cleaning inside. I was tinkering around on the outside of the trailer and we were just getting it ready because we were going to be moving it to a campground outside of Suaro National Park. Barbara finished up inside and I started backing up the truck to hook up the trailer and I had to jack up the trailer to get it level with the truck. As I began doing this, I heard liquid coming out. I heard water. And so I look underneath the trailer and sure enough, there's water coming out from the underbelly of the trailer. And so I kind of get closer and immediately this very strong smell of sewer hits me. And I'm thinking, oh no, what is that? Okay, so it appears to be that there's some water coming out. I think maybe the, the gray the gray tank valve is broken or something's going on because um, when I, I don't know. I get on the phone, I call the previous owner and I explain what is happening. 
And he said, oh, that's so strange. I, we didn't have any water in the underbelly. Maybe it's just water that accumulated from when we were towing previously because we had towed through a rainstorm or something, but he couldn't understand why there would be water underneath. Since he couldn't explain it and there really wasn't anything that he could do, I had to get underneath the underbelly and cut some sections so that it would drain faster. And after, again, smelling it, and it, it, it was sewage water. I'm, I'm certain that it was sewage water. But there wasn't anything that we could do, so we had cleaned out as much of it as we could. It drained out for the most part, and we hooked up the trailer to the truck, and we got on the road. As you probably can imagine, both Barbara and I were so, so frustrated. Um, it was supposed to be a, a wonderful day. It was supposed to be a day of happiness, of getting our new trailer, making it our new home, and it was completely flipped around into almost like we bought a lemon, that we didn't know what other problems that we were gonna find, but we did know that the entire inside of the trailer smelled like a sewer, and that how were we gonna sleep that night? Because it, it was so potent. So we did what any rational person would do. We opened a bottle of liquor. <laughs> we had a couple of drinks. I crawled underneath the underbelly of the trailer. We had some bleach. And so I had poured like a bit of a, a bleach water concoction underneath. And we were trying to, you know, spray it down, hose it down to help kind of, you know, eliminate or reduce that sewer smell. And yeah, and that's, uh, it, it did help. And we had all the windows open in the trailer. So it just kind of aired out. And that night ended up not being that bad of, of a sleep. You could still smell it, but it wasn't horrible. The crazy part is, is that to this day, we have no clue of exactly how that water got underneath there. Because obviously there would be a leak in the black tank. And yet we have used the tank flush. We have used the black tank. And we have not had that same issue come up again. So... We, we're, we have completely dumbfounded as to what the previous couple had done to get that liquid underneath there. But the best part was, was that we were out of that horrible, horrible neighborhood in southern Tucson. We were out at a campsite, we were in our new trailer, and all we had to wait for now was the truck to be finished. Which in typical fashion, the mechanic kept delaying, where he would say, oh, in a week or in another week. and the dates that he was giving us kept changing. The major reason that that was a huge inconvenience for us is the unavailability of campsites and RV parks in the area. Tucson is already a high destination for snowbirds during the winter months, but on top of that, with that gem show, there was nothing available. And we only had a few days at the Saguaro National Park campsite before we had to leave. So we ended up finding a KOA in Picacho, which is about 45 minutes northwest of Tucson. So that was our only option. We had to go stay there and wait for the truck to be finished. We had made plans with my family to meet them in Joshua Tree, California for a weekend to celebrate my birthday as well as my brother's birthday. And so we had a hard deadline to leave on. The mechanic knew this, and I had constantly reminded him. And despite delay after delay, I was patient and I waited. And yet, it came down to the very, very last evening before we needed to go. And thankfully, he was able to finish up the truck, and the back of the truck was like brand new. And we were able to get back on the road and head to California on schedule to meet with my family. So after six weeks from the date of the crash until we bought a new trailer and got our truck fixed, we were back on the road and we were so happy. When looking back, six weeks is really nothing, especially when it comes to buying a new trailer, getting a truck fixed, packing up all of your things out of your destroyed trailer and moving it to another city, we did so much within that period of time that it's truly impressive. I've explained a lot of the different upgrades that we did on the truck and the trailer in our Instagram page, but if that's something that you guys are interested in, please just leave it in the comment section down below, and I'm happy to give you all the information of all the things that I did to make our truck as rock solid when we're towing as possible.
So that pretty much summarizes our first incident of 2020. This was the first. So we started the year destroying our trailer, getting stranded in the middle of nowhere, having to relocate to a very, very shady neighborhood in Tucson, buy a new trailer, get our truck fixed, get back on the road, and continue our travels, which we did. So yay! <laughs> We had to go through a lot, but man, man, it was worth it. And it created some very long lasting memories that Barbara and I will surprisingly fondly look back with. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will be continuing our 2020 adventures. So stay tuned. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.